What's going on, everyone? So Cam Reddish is a player that's been linked to the Lakers for some time now, right? I mean, even last season, the Lakers essentially had a trade done to acquire Cam Reddish until the Knicks got a little greedy, and that trade ended up falling through right at the final hour, which is really unfortunate. It would have been nice to have a guy like Cam Reddish, 6'8", good size. I'm not the greatest shooter, right? I mean, he's shooting, you know, 30... 31% from three this season, but it's also hard when you don't have a consistent role, right? When you're, when you're, you know, in and out of the lineup. I mean, he hasn't played since December 3rd, I believe. Uh, so it's not like he, he's had this time to rest up and he's had this time to hopefully he's continuing to work on his game. Now there are some concerns and some questions about Cam Reddish, right? Uh, his work ethic dating back to Duke. There were a lot of questions about his commitment to the game of basketball and his work ethic, but I do think in the right situation, I really do think that that can turn around. You know, if you're on a team with LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook, guys like that that are just relentless, it's really hard to, you have to really try not to, to work harder uh, when you're around those guys. And Darvin Ham, you know, he's a player coach, he's a guy that I could see really kind of helping this young man kind of build his career in, in a positive direction. And we, look, we could greatly use the size. Uh, 6'8", good size, good wingspan, could play both forward spots, which we really could use. Uh, and he's just a guy that can be consistent. He's going to get looks like he's probably never gotten playing next to Russ and LeBron. So even if he could just get to average, that would be great. Now, the thing about Cam Reddish is that he's not a move that's going to immediately, like, he's not the move that's like, oh man, now we're really off to the races and, and, and winning a championship, right? We got our 6-8 wing. No, this is more of like a, he's extremely young. He has a lot of upside and a lot of promise. He hasn't really gotten a fair shake anywhere he went. And now he's going to have a, a real opportunity here to carve out a role. Uh, you know, he has proof in the pudding. Look at like Max Christie. He was able to carve a roll out, and he's been getting solid minutes. Uh, Austin Reeves. Austin Reeves has been huge, right? Last year, this year. So he's a guy that if he works and shows and can actually play the role that is asked of him, he's a guy that could really get uh, some solid rotation minutes. And the Lakers could really use a guy of his size. Seriously, just with the rebounding, the defense. I have a guy like him that could you could put on, you know, like the Paul Georges, the Kawhi Leonard's of the world uh, to just make things difficult. You're not going to stop those guys, but it's better to have a 6'8 guy on him rather than like, you know, Patrick Beverly at six foot, six one. It's like, it's night and day. Uh, and recent reports have suggested that uh, the New York Knicks are looking for two second round picks. And of course, that makes sense. The Lakers have two second round picks. They have the 2023, their pick, and they have Chicago's 2023 pick. So that would be huge if they could go and make a move. Now, this is hopefully not the be all end all move. Like again, Cam Reddish is more of like whatever production we can get for him this season is great, but he's young enough to where he could be a building block for the future. Uh, you know, have him, have Max Christie, uh, maybe you could pull off a trade. Like if you did like a Hornets deal or something, and maybe you get like a PJ Washington. Imagine if you had Washington Reddish and Max for the next like 10 seasons. Like that's a really good foundation to kind of build on. Cam Reddish, uh, he's going to need a new contract. His contract's not going to be very high. Uh, he's also a clutch sports client. So, uh, you know, the Lakers have that, that one leg in as opposed to maybe some other teams. And of course, there are other teams that are in the mix. Uh, Dallas and Milwaukee are two teams that I, I could see them trying to acquire him. Uh, although, I don't think he would have the role with those teams that he would with the Lakers. I think the Lakers, he could actually carve out a real role as opposed to just, and I wouldn't even be surprised if he could earn starting minutes just because we need a sizable wing. Uh, but, you know, I think he would have a fair shake there. But regardless, what that does, that just drives up the cost, right? Because you have multiple teams that are trying to, to go after him. So it makes things difficult. Uh, this is a big issue right for the Lakers because the Lakers are very limited on resources and tradable assets uh, and that's probably one of the reasons why a deal hasn't gotten done right so many people I see in the comment sections uh, and, you know, even my live stream stuff like why haven't we went and got Cam Reddish do it get the deal done but you know if you're the Knicks and you have three or four teams all willing to take them why why are you in a rush to trade for them you know even if the Lakers want to give up both seconds and they're like, yeah, we'll give you both seconds right now. Let's do it. If you're the Knicks, well, what, what is Milwaukee willing to Are they willing to give up three? Are they willing to give up four? Are they willing to give up a first? You know, like all of a sudden, that becomes a, a real issue. And so that this is going to be interesting. Um, it also comes down to where does he want to go, right? Because, I mean, granted, he would be restricted, so teams could control it. But... You know, there's already questions about his work ethic. There's already questions about, like, just his commitment. 
to the game of basketball, like I mentioned earlier. And so if you're if you're a team like Milwaukee and he's like, I don't want to be in Milwaukee, I want to go to the Lakers, do you really want to take the risk, sign him, and then he, you have him for the next several seasons and he's just like you know, not really committed, he's just kind of there just to be there? That's not really good for Milwaukee. Uh, but who knows? We'll, we'll see. But based on recent reports, uh, per Mark Stein, the Knicks trade discussions involving Reddish have recently intensified. Uh, the Los Angeles Lakers, Dallas Mavericks, and Milwaukee Bucks are among the teams pursuing the 23-year-old. So again, um, just he's young. He's, I mean, he's as young as like half the guys drafted in this year's draft. Like the guy is is still has a lot of upside, a lot of promise. Um, he's a guy that has shown some really bright spots, uh, even in even in inconsistent minutes. He's still averaging like eight to ten points a game. Uh, so I imagine what he could do in a consistent role with a team that actually wants him, that actually believes in him and buys into him, that has some vets that can that can really kind of shape him and mold him. Right? I mean, you got LeBron James. Uh, you know, he. I mean, his work ethic and just his commitment to the game of basketball is unquestionable, undeniable. So he can really kind of help. I could see him really kind of taking Cam Reddish under his wing and be like, dude, look, you have all the potential in the world, right? You got athleticism, you got size, you can shoot the ball, you can pass, you can do a little bit of everything. Like you could be a real pillar in this league if you if you put your mind to it and you work hard for it. And so hopefully that would be the case because look, the Lakers, he'd be an absolute welcome addition. Now again, hopefully that's not where it stops, right? Like if you go and you trade, say Kendrick Nunn in two seconds for, for Cam Reddish, right? Like, I hope that that's not it. <laughs> you know, I hope you take Patrick Beverly and, you know, Lonnie Walker, go get Boyan and whatever and another piece or something. Uh, whatever, whatever, whatever it takes to, to round out this roster. But if you can get Cam Reddish, I like the idea of Cam Reddish. Again, don't expect him to be a real needle mover or anything like that. This is more of like a, not only this season, but a long term play. Like this is like your best case is that he comes in and he plays a role like Stanley Johnson, where he just is playing solid defense. If he knocks down a couple shots here and there, it's it's an added bonus, but it's more so just for his defensive intensity. Hopefully, that's what he can kind of carve and make his uh his case for playing time with. Is that like yeah, I can I can come in, I'll knock down the open shots, uh, and look, I, I'm committed to the defensive end. I'm a guy that's going to come in. I'm going to give you, you know, whatever, 15 minutes of just solid defense and rotation time when you put me in. And hopefully Darvin Ham, you know, gives him the opportunity to really blossom. Like Darvin Ham, like I said, isn't against playing the young guys. He, he He's allowed Max Christie to earn and play a role. You know, he's allowed, he's allowed uh, Austin Reeves. To, to really thrive where Austin Reeves has been a huge part and it's only his second year. So, you know, like he's he's definitely going to have an opportunity with the Lakers. So if you're Cam Reddish too, how are you looking at this, right? Like if you're Cam Reddish, would you rather go to Dallas where you might play a couple minutes here and there and, you know, it may or may not work out or Milwaukee where, you know, you're only going to play a couple minutes here and there, may or may not work out or a team like the Lakers where you could have a real opportunity to play ample minutes right because they're not going to start him over like a middleton or something like that like so you're kind of stuck right so you 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 do you want the opportunity to potentially get into a starting role and even if it's not this year actually be in a position to where like i could be the starting shooting or small forward or even like power forward on this team for the next several seasons you know like this is a place that i could come plus it's la come on la uh everyone wants to be in la so i think that that would be, those are some benefits. And then, of course, him being a clutch client uh, obviously gives us a leg in regardless. But, again, he, he's a guy that I really do think has a ton of up, upside, right? Like, if we drafted this kid this year, everyone would be talking about how he's going to be the new star on the face of the league. <laughs> like, literally. Like, everyone would be like, dude, we just got a 23-year-old 6'8 guy that can give you 10 points a game. Like, if he was giving you 10 points a game in preseason, Everyone will be talking about how him and Max Christie are going to be the new faces. We got the small forward and we got the shooting guard of the future. Let's go. We're going to be great. Like post LeBron, you know, you'd, you'd hear all the hype and all the, you know, over, over the topness uh, that, that tends to happen if that was the case. But, you know, some people are looking at it as like, oh, well, you know, he, he, he wasn't any good in Atlanta, but he didn't have an opportunity really in Atlanta. You know, I mean, one of his best years was his rookie year when he got the most opportunity and then they immediately went and got the, all the veteran depth, and then there went his role. So then they end up trading him, and Tibbs doesn't want him. Tibbs is like, don't trade for the guy. So they end up trading for him anyway, and then immediately almost sent him back to the Lakers. You know, so it's like, you know, if you're if you're the Lakers, 
you're looking at him as he, he's a piece that not only helps now, but could help for the next, he could be your key cog for the next 10 plus years, right? I mean, think about it, 10 years, he'd still only be 33. So you could have him through his prime, all that stuff. You're going to get him on a, on a really cheap deal, very likely. I mean, you should. Uh, you know, you're probably going to get him under 10 million for the next couple seasons. So why not get him and and then you know try to try to work something out, get him for for your long haul, and then whatever production and and quality he gives you is production and quality he gives you now. Now again, hopefully it's not the the case of like oh well you know we're just going to get Cam Reddish and that's it. Here you go here here Laker Nation here's your here's your trade here's what you wanted right like. I hope that's not where the Lakers stop or, you know, like I hope that they continue to try to find deals, whether it's Boyan, whether it's, you know, Spurs deal, whether it's, you know, a uh, uh, Pacers deal, whatever, whatever deal ends up popping up. Cam Reddish is, a, is a definitely a start in the right direction. Definitely a piece that I would be excited for. And I'm sure many others would be very excited for, but you can't just stop at Reddish. You gotta go and get other pieces beyond Reddish. Um, I, I, I'm all for them going and giving up. You know, if you got to give up both seconds, give up the two seconds. Your hope in the second round is to get a guy like Cam Reddish. Like literally, that's your, that's what you hope for. Not just that, but Lakers, they, they love buying second round picks. So if there's a guy that they really like and they really value in the second round, they could just go get him, you know, shovel up the money, go get the guy, uh, bring him in. You know, the Lakers have done that the last several seasons. So it's not like, it's not like if, oh, well, we trade away both seconds, that's it. You know, and we're still going to have a first round this year. So, you know, hopefully it's, you know, obviously the Pelicans are going to take ours. So we're going to get the Pelicans. So hopefully you can find somebody nice, right? Hopefully you can find a, a solid rotation guy at best. That's what you're hoping for, especially that late in the first round. But Regardless, the Lakers are still in a position where they have assets, they have picks, they have picks along the way. They just have very limited tradable assets and tradable picks. But regardless, I, I, I'm I'm for this. I'm all for this move, and I hope that the Lakers pull it off. I really do. But as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. What do you think? Is this a deal? Like, you're like, yes, let's get this deal done. Let's make this deal happen. Uh, I, I'd love this. Uh, or do you think, you know, are you kind of like, nah, like, you know, look for other options. Don't trade Kendrick Nunn. Because it, here's the problem, too, is that if you, like, let's say we did Kendrick Nunn for Cam Reddish. Now, if we want to get another deal without trading Russ, we have to trade Lonnie Walker, which I'm not against trading Lonnie Walker. Right, because Lonnie Walker, we're probably not going to be able to retain him after this season. Not just that, but I think I think Max Christie is your future. I mean, he's already he already might be our best on ball defender, and he's got a, a nice Chris shot. I think he's going to get. I think he's going to really earn some solid minutes uh, going into going into next season. Um, so I think you have your starting shooting guard locked up. Or at least you know your backup shooting guard, worst case, and and Christie, and then if you could go get Cam Reddish, well, now you got your starting or backup small forward, uh, and these are the kind of moves that I think you need. Where where Lonnie Walker, I think you're probably going to lose, but if you go get him, then that means all you have left really now is stacking a bunch of contracts, which not many teams like to take on. You know, five, six, seven players just to meet salary. Uh, but you never know. We'll see how it goes. Or you're trading Russ. So meh. Anyway. Again, love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Let me know down in the comments below.